Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on conducting the Fisher's exact test using SPSS. The Fisher's exact test functions in a similar manner to the chi-square, but it's used when you have smaller sample sizes. Specifically, if you have tables with expected cell frequencies of less than five. The Fisher's exact test tests the null hypothesis that the relative proportions of one variable are independent of a second variable. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have in the data view in SPSS, you can see I have two variables, training and outcome, and then I have training two and outcome two. And you'll notice that in training and outcome, there are 40 values in each variable, but only 20 for training two and outcome two. So let's say that you're running some type of educational program and you have a special training and you believe it affects the pass or fail outcome on some sort of specific test get at the end of the program. So this variable in this case is dichotomous and the tr training variable is also dichotomous because these zeros and ones. So we want to test to see if training, if the presence of the specialized training affects whether individuals pass or fail the test. Now in chi-square and in Fisher's exact test, the observations need to be independent. So these don't represent matched pairs. Right? You see there's no ID variable here to the left. These aren't the same participants. These are independent observations. So we'll start with the training and outcome variables. We'll go to Analyze and Descriptive Statistics cross tabs. And since training here is the predictor variable, I'm going to put that in the row. That's not required for this to work, but that's a common way to categorize the predictor variable. And then the outcome I'm going to put into the column. I'm also going to display bar charts. Under statistics, I want to run chi-square. You'll notice there is no checkbox for Fisher's exact test. It'll run automatically if the data meet the criteria for it to run. So I'll click continue here. For cells, I'm going to ask for the counts for both observed, which is checked by default and expected. And I also want the percentages for row column and then the total percentages. I'm making no changes to format or style. I click OK. So before I take a look at the actual results of the chi-square test, I like to take a look at the cross tabulation and examine the counts, in this case for the training and no training levels of the independent variable. So you can see for training, 11 passed and 9 failed. And for no training, 4 passed and 16 failed. So before even looking at the p-values, I can see that it does appear that the training has more of an effect than no training in terms of predicting a pass result. But in order to determine if there's statistical significance, of course, we have to go down and look at the chi-square tests. And you can see here below the table, it says that zero cells have expected count less than five. So in this case, we're going to interpret the Pearson chi-square and not the Fisher's exact test. Now, as you can see, if we're using an alpha of 0 0.05, we have statistical significance either way. 0 0.048 is statistically significant, and the Pearson chi-square, which is the one we would interpret, is 0 0.022. It's also statistically significant. So we're going to reject the null hypothesis that the relative proportions of one variable are independent of the second variable. And we're going to say that the relative proportions of training 
are not independent of outcome. And then we'll take a look at the bar charts, or bar chart here at the end. And you can see blue is representing pass and green representing fail. You see for the training variable that we had more passes than failures, but for the no training there were relatively few passes compared to how many failed. So now I'm going to run chi-square again, going to descriptive statistics and cross tabs. I'm going to leave everything the same except I'm going to change out the variables. And instead of training and outcome, I'm going to use training 2 and outcome 2. And you might remember there's a smaller sample size here. I'll click OK. And again, I'm going to take a look at this cross tabulation. And you can see that in the training, the training level, we had 8 pass, 2 fail, but the no training level, 3 pass, and 7 fail. So if we move down to chi-square test here, again, remember you want to read below the table here first, 2 cells have expected count less than 5. All right, so in this case, we want to interpret the Fisher's exact test and not interpret the Pearson chi-square. And in this particular example, this changes the conclusion you would draw. You can see Pearson chi-square is statistically significant, but the Fisher's exact test is not. With an alpha level of 0.05, Fisher's exact test you can see here is 0.07, so it's greater than 0.05. It is not a statistically significant result. So in this case, we would say the relative proportions of training are independent of outcome. And if we take a look at the bar chart, we can see for the training level, there were several that passed, not many that failed. And for the no training, there were a few that passed, but there are many more that failed. And really, this is just a graphical illustration of what we knew here numerically, right, that we have more passing in the training group than in the no training. But still, it's not st statistically significant, so we would reject the null hypothesis in this case. I want to make an important point about the Fisher's exact test. You might remember that there's no box to check off. When I go to Analyze, Des Descriptive Statistics, Cross Tabs, there's no box to check off. Uh, Fisher's exact test will run automatically if the data meet the criteria. Now the test can handle more than just two variables. But whether you have two variables or more, the variables must be dichotomous. So if I were to go back in here, and let's return this to the code view, so you can see the outcome here, you have 0 or 1. So let's say there was a data entry error. Instead of a 0, this first outcome changed to a 2. Now, of course, that has no meaning for this variable. That would just be a value that was miskeyed in there. And I go to run the cross tabs and again I have training 2 and outcome 2 already in here so this is the same analysis I, I ran before except I have that one value that's a 2 when it should have been a 0. As I move down to chi-square test notice that there is no Fisher's exact test here. You still get the uh, expected count less than 5 warning down here but there is no Fisher's exact test. It did not come up because that variable is not dichotomous. If I were to go back and change that to zero and rerun the same statistic using the same settings, you can see that it's back. So the Fisher's exact test is a useful statistical test when expected cell frequencies are less than 5, 
and the variables are dichotomous. In addition, the observations need to be independent. I hope you found this video on conducting the Fisher's exact test in SPSS to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.